right, cool. Welcome to part two of this video. If you haven't checked out part one on how to uh, how to use these sign conventions for mirrors and lenses, I highly recommend you check that out because I'm going to be referring to it here today. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is focusing in on just lenses, specifically converging and diverging lenses. So what we learned last time is that a converging lens has a positive focal length or a positive radius of curvature. Um, and that is the image that you're seeing or this figure that you're seeing here in the lower right that is um, a converging lens. A diverging lens, on the other hand, has a negative focal length or a negative radius of curvature. Okay, so let's explore these in, in greater detail because all of the problems that you're going to do that involve only one lens will fall into four categories. And here are the categories. So you can have a converging or a diverging lens. And then your object can either be inside the focal length of that lens or outside the focal length of that lens. In other words, it can be really close to the lens or really far away from the lens. Those are sort of the two ways of thinking about it. Those are the only options that you have for lens problems. And in fact, what we're going to find out is that these two that both fall within diverging lenses effectively act the same way. So really it's like you only have three categories of problems that involve one lens. So let's check out the converging lens first. Suppose that your object is outside a focal point. So something like this. Here's um, a picture of a converging lens. Here is the focal point. It is uh, diagrammed by the letter F, typically. And the object, you see, is outside the focal length of this lens. And so the object is to the left of the focal length. And so what we said last time in part one of this video is that any light ray that emanates from that object and actually passes through the image will create a real image, which means that the image distance is positive 100% of the time. Real images have positive image distances. What we can also say is that any real image with a positive object or a positive image distance will also be inverted 100% of the time. 100% of the time, and that just comes from um, actually the definition of magnification. So if you take a look at that and you plug in your values, you'll see where that comes from. So what we end up with is if we have an object outside this focal point, then we end up with a real inverted image. However, if we have an object inside the focal point of a converging lens, something like this, then something really weird happens. Um, so the way that yeah, okay, so that's fine. So here's this object. It's really close to this converging lens. And what you notice is the light ray that emanates off of this object actually goes down into the right, right? And this one that comes out parallel to the principal axis here and bends down towards that principal axis. Neither of these rays actually go through this dotted representation of the image, which is all the way over here to the left. And so what we say is that that image is a virtual image because that light ray does not actually pass through that image. And because it's a virtual image, it has a negative image distance. And again, because it's a virtual image, 100% of the time, virtual images are going to be upright. So here, when the object is inside, excuse me, inside the focal point, then we end up with a virtual upright image. So that's category two. Okay, now finally, we've got diverging lenses. And as I promised you, both of these options, whether our object is outside the focal point or within the focal point, either way, we're going to find that um, we get the same result. So let's just check out how that works. Here's my object is outside the focal point right now. You can see this object is to the left of the focal point, which is marked with an F. And what you see here is that the image ends up on the same side of the lens as the object. And so we call that a virtual image. Notice that these, this light ray, for example, this light ray here does not pass through that image. Therefore, because all of the light rays don't pass through that image, we cannot call it a real image. And in fact, it's up, uh, excuse me, in, in fact, it's a virtual, which means that it must be an upright image. So when the object is outside the focal point, we get an upright virtual image. Now, when your object is within that focal point, here you get actually the exact same thing. It looks exactly the same. And so here you can see an upright virtual image within that focal length is formed. So now you've broken it into three categories that should help when you're working through these lens problems.